This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. When we are talking about the existence of the Creator in our lives, so we're talking about something that is spiritual, something that is not limited. And we're trying to see how to bring Him into our life that are limited and measured into forms and sizes and shapes and measurements. Or but so the real so. truth, but the real truth is that the Creator is above all of those constrictions of physicality. And only our mind is really limited under this power of imagination that is being called the fake world, Alma Dashika, the world of lie. Because there are really no limitations and no measurements and there's no time at all and everything is above time. But still we can feel sick or tired or weak or poor or stressed or under those rules of nature now. To fall into the, that fake world is something that can happen very easily even to people that are claiming to, to, to possess God, to, to believe in Hashem. And very easily people can fall into religion, to a religious world that is, that is fake. And that's why they call them fake from birth. <laughs> because it's an imagination, it's not real. You can be observant, you can run after a list of rules and obligations and it's only your mindset, it's only your thoughts that are obligating you to a certain system that you're actually above and beyond. You're just not aware to who that you are. And it doesn't mean that you're allowed to violate it. You just need to listen to the inner voice, the spiritual voice, the voice of the Creator, voice of life, voice of the creation that is speaking to you from within and not from outside. So even if you choose to follow the rules of the Torah, of the Bible, and, and you, you think that you're following righteous people and you're trying to walk in the right way, in the right path, it's very easy to fall into that trap of the evil inclination and to, to be under the power of imagination of this fake world. Because this world really does not exist. It's only an illusion that we're under the limitations of time and size and measures and weights. But really we are parts of heaven. We're all godly souls that doesn't fit into no shape. We're above it. And that's why people in this generation, we can see it clearly, and in every generation it was a little bit different. But this is why you have people that are going in a very hard and radical way against the stream. This is why people are dropping, dropping, dropping off school and drinking from very young ages and using drugs and, and because they have to fly away from this world. They can't stand the constrictions of this world only because that they are aware to an inner freedom, some mystery that is unsolved yet, but still familiar and known from within. And they know that it exists somewhere. Like, I felt it. I, I, I know it. He's there. There is outside of this world somewhere. So people are running away from the limitations of this world into that a certain outlet, everyone to that one that is accessible, that is closest to him. One is going into music, one is going into art, one is going into dancing, one is going to drugs, it doesn't matter. One even running away to make money for the rest of his life because he doesn't want to feel, he doesn't want to feel the distance from the Creator. He afraid from that horrible feeling of separation from the source of good, 
from infinity. So that fear from the separation from the Creator will push everyone to an angle that in that place he will be left alone. He won't have to feel, okay, here I'm free. I'm fulfilling my obligation, my parents weren't going to talk to me, I was finishing school and then a university and now I have a very good job and I'm working, I'm making money, no one's going no one to talk to me anymore. Okay, now he's free. Another person, he can't function in school, he won't succeed in university, so he's going to sports, he's going to drugs, something else, because... Shalom Aleichem, good to see you too, Rabbi. And it's all a fake, fake, it's all, it's all just really a pile of emotions that are not treated well, that are not being taken care of well enough, good enough. But when every individual, no matter who he is, He's taking a decision in his own private life to stop running away from his fears and to deal with his reality, with his emotions. And he's taking responsibility on who that he is. And he's trying to think to himself, okay, but who am I? Who am I? Really, who am I? What is my mission in this world? What's the purpose of, of my existence? What am I willing to achieve what are my qualities and my abilities and my talents mm. then he finds an inner connection to the truth now a person like we said before he can follow the rules of of religion of judaism and also to try to follow the the highest and most righteous leader in the universe and to think to himself that he is keeping the, the, the customs and, and, and following the, the, the rules of, of the Hasidut and obeying and he's doing more than, than he should and he's so strict. And, and, and. But the truth is that he lives an external life of running away from his inner truth. And he will find comfort in the books and in the verses and in the promises and in classes and lectures of rabbis that are going to promise to him that he will be close to them in the world to come and he will have an eternal life and, and he will succeed and Hashem is proud of him. And all of those things are just fairy tales. It's not that it's not true, but really he never met that in his life. It's only he's feeding himself on external opinions of, of people, of books, of, 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 of rabbis, it's not important from who. He never experienced spirituality. He never really found Hashem. He never really stood up in front of his existence and faced reality. To be honest and to be truthful. There are verses and there are lines that have been written in holy books that are contradicting all the rest. For an example, in the end of Masechet Brachot, in the Mishnayot, it's written, Et la'asot la'ashem efer otoratecha. That there is a time that if you want to do something for the Creator, for Hashem, it's the time to violate the rules of the Torah. What? If you want to follow Hashem, Et la'asot la'ashem, there is time that you should do something for Hashem. So what should you do? Efer <coughs> otoratecha, to violate the rules of the Torah. Now, what are you going to do with that? Every time that you call your rabbi, every time that you try to find an answer to a question, everyone going to guide you to follow the Jewish rules, the halachot. They're going to tell you, no, you must keep Shabbat. And even if you cannot do it now, so violate one, but in the intention you should have to, to keep all the Shabbatot in the... Like, you cannot really violate. So why is it written that you can violate? Why is it written? So, okay, I'm going to ask myself, so, can I violate the rules of the Torah? Okay, now, Rav, you're permitting me to violate the rules of the Torah. I want to do for Hashem. I want to party every Shabbos. I want to do, do, smoke drugs. That's, that's how I feel I'm happy. No, that's, uh, I'm not going to guide you to do that. There is no guidings. There are no guidings. There is no person that can tell you what to do because every situation like that, that someone external will come to you and will tell you what to do, will leave you in the same place of receiving your wisdom from an external source, and it's wrong. 
You need to find your inner connection to the Creator. You must face your fears and you should be brave and to find the answer to your questions alone at night when you're afraid, when you're scared. There you should bring out the right advice and the wisdom that your heart is telling you because you receive the heart. A heart is not only a machine that runs the blood in your system. A heart is something that contains spiritual bounty. It's something that holds your soul inside of your body. It's something that is channeling you to your divine root in heaven, to an endless source of wisdom, to the sea of wisdom, Yama Chochmah. And you can pull wisdom from there, from your heart to your heart, but you must connect yourself to yourself, to your own heart. You must feel with your heart. And as long as you are always disqualifying yourself and blaming yourself and closing yourself and denying your feelings and trying to, to, to ignore yourself because you're so scared, because you're afraid to be hurt again, because you made mistakes in your life or at least people told you that you were wrong or whatever you've been through in life and you are blocking yourself from being who that you really are, you will never going to understand the potential of being an angel like you are, and higher than an angel. When the Creator, think about the Creator now. Okay, so He's, and He's endless. He's above everything. Now, He told us, if you're going to build Beit HaMikdash, I'm going to live with you. Okay, so He built to Himself, we built for Him, a certain box, a certain apartment, a house, and now he lives inside of it. So I'm asking you, the fact that he lives inside of a certain house, is it limiting him? When you're in the house and the house is locked, so you're trapped in that house, you cannot run away. If it's a prison, that's it, you're there. If someone will set you free, you're out. But Hashem, the Creator, that is spiritual, now, can you lock him inside of a prison? You cannot. Can you, you cannot lock him? Either. You cannot. We cannot be locked anywhere. Either. Exactly. That's the power of your mind. That's exactly what I'm saying. A physical body can be trapped in a box. But a spiritual being can never be trapped in a box. Why? Because he's endless. Because he's eternity. He's above everything else. So you cannot put him in a box. Even if he, from his own will, is going into the box. He will not really going to be there completely with no access to the outside. Because He's endless. He doesn't have no borders. So your soul, if you ignore it, and if you don't feel it, if you're not aware to it, you're not going to use it, it can be trapped in your body, and then you're just going to feel a certain electricity and, and emotions and certain vibes in your system that are making you function. You wake up and you can smell and you can sense and you can see, okay, the machine is running on that certain battery for the rest of your life until the charger will finish, will, will, will end. Okay, but it's only because you're ignoring your soul. That's why you're limited. If you're going to set yourself free and going to focus in your soul, you're going to understand that you are also above nature. And every person got that power. Now it's written that we've been created Betzalmo, in His shape. And we know that He, the Creator, doesn't have a shape. So how can it be? On him it's written, En lo guf ve'en lo dmut guf. He doesn't have a body and he doesn't have the physical shape of a body. He doesn't have no form. So how can it be that we, that we have a body, that we have a, a figure, how can it be that we've been created in his figure if he doesn't have one? It cannot be. You don't need to be a genius to understand that it cannot be. But still, we need to explain the verse. How can it be that we've been created in his shape? That like that he really does not have a shape, we also, in the side of our spiritual creation, are free from all kinds of shapes and figures. And we are free creations. And we are connected to infinity. So you also have endless power to bring down to this world godliness from the world that is above. And that's how once in a while you see that your prayers are being answered and that your thoughts changing reality and the things that you're thinking about taking place in reality mm -hmm. and certain things that you thought about are happening in front of your eyes, how those things are happening. 
few days ago, my wife and I and our children, we were sitting in front of the beach in, uh, in San Diego, and we saw many animals, lions, seals, birds, many, many wonderful creations. And after a couple of hours, it began to be boring, even though it was very nice and it was beautiful. But, okay, we saw, finished. And my wife said, okay, maybe we should go. So I told her, listen, do you want me to bring whales? And like, we're going to stay a little bit longer. So she told me, come on. I told her, listen, I'm going to bring whales, okay? <laughs> and she said, okay, bring whales. And I'm not lying to you. Less than 30 seconds, and there were three whales swimming in the Pacific Ocean in front of our eyes. Three whales, and they were not there one second before. And it's not because that I'm powerful. It's a joke to think that I really made it. Just Hashem Barach used His creation to reveal His endless power. To show you that your mouth can make wonders. Not because of your mouth, because the, the Creator, on Him it's written, Ose niflaot levado, niflaot delot levado ki leolam chasdo. He's the one that makes all those wonders. And He makes wonders. He makes wonders. He can change the world. Now, like we said in the beginning, this world for us, it looks like that this world is going under the rules of nature. We all feel that we're aging. We all feel in the winter that it's cold and in the summer that it's hot. When we don't have money, we feel that we don't have it. When someone is insulting us, we feel those emotions. We feel that we are under the effect, under the rules of nature, of time, of place. But the real truth is that those rules being set by the divine governor, by the one that set those rules, and he can change those rules. He can decide that you're not going to die like Elisha the prophet. He can decide that you're going to fly to heaven on flaming horses. If he will take that decision on you in your life, that's exactly what that's going to happen to you. The Bible is telling us on 10 people, different people, not all of them were Jewish, that went up to heaven without dying. 10 people. So, that rule applies that people should, can die, that people will die finally, only when Hashem wants people to die. Only when Hashem wants people to live under that rule system of nature. But when the Creator will decide to break nature, then death will be cancelled from the world completely and no one gonna die anymore. Today people are getting sick, today people are getting poor. Only because the, the Creator is still hiding His face in that way that He's standing behind that curtain of rules of nature. So you feel those feelings because someone let you feel those feelings but when the creator will decide to remove that curtain that's the end of the fake world of nature now every one of us must rebel must fight against that power of imagination that is breaking our spirit and making us think that we are about to be sick or die, or being poor, being left out, being left alone, being disgraced. All of those thoughts, negative thoughts, are really in their, in their foundation, in who that they really are, are lies, are fake thoughts, are negative thoughts that are coming to block the light of the truth. That the truth is that the Creator is above nature and that you're a spiritual being. Someone is laughing at you that you don't look good. Only because He has His crazy thoughts and you also have a very low self-esteem. None of those thoughts are real. Doesn't have a place in the creation in, from the side of truth. Only the negativity. Only when you run away from the truth into the fake world of lies. So only someone that stands in certain standards that have been set by sick people. People that are lack of faith. People that are lack of re real <coughs> understanding of how life really works. 
So now, under their uh, system, under their um, standards, you don't hold yourself as beautiful, you don't hold yourself as rich, you don't hold yourself and you feel bad about yourself and you have negative thoughts and you're suffering only because that you have not set yourself free from the fake world of lie and you are putting yourself under the rules of nature. But the rules of nature are lies. It's a scam. It's not the truth. If we all going to choose to focus in our spirituality, in the source of our soul, we will all going to live forever and not going to die. We're going to experience the resurrection of the dead. We're going to see the face of Mashiach. We're going to walk hand in hand together. No evilty, no poverty, no weaknesses, no sorrow will take place in this world anymore. Amen. And it's in our power. And it's in our power not because that we're so powerful and great, just because that this is the real will of the Creator, that in the end of this fake world, after those 6,000 years, the Creator will reveal the fact that He is a Creator, that He is above nature, and that all of this creation was only a test, was only a temporary situation that was about to finish from the first moment of creation. It had a certain time. And the world is spinning to wake us up to understand that it's about to finish. That the circle are about to finish. And then we're going to go back to the same place where we started. That we're going to walk with a huge smile on our faces in heaven. And the Creator will walk between us. And He will protect us. And there will be no more anger. And no cruelty, no more reasons for fear. And you will just gonna have complete confidence and you will feel secure and you will know the purpose of your life and you'll have only friends walking with you and everyone will be caring and supportive and that's reality. And I know that we're all in the exile. I'm also with you in that exile. And also I didn't smoke no weed and I didn't know took no drugs before I came to the lecture. I'm clean. <laughs> I'm just connected to my soul and my soul is screaming from inside, you're free. You're not a slave of your fears and anxieties. So people that are a little bit weaker, not because that their nature is weak, just because that they have not found that outlet yet, that path yet, to escape with honor and with pride from their prison, but they still have that ancient memory that is screaming from inside, set yourself free, so they need to use drugs, they need to use alcohol, they need to use the movies, whatever, theater, to set themselves free even for an hour, even for a day, even for the weekend, even for whatever, but I'm telling you that the truth is that the ones that are using drugs, the ones that are using whatever to set themselves free, are also doing it because of a point of truth that is shining from within. Because of that ancient memory that is screaming to them, you are a sparrow, you're a free bird, just spread your wings and fly. You can live, you can live eternal life. And they feel it, but they don't know how to access. They don't know how to get to that. So they at least doing something to save their lives. And I agree with those people. I hug those people. I understand their hearts. I was in that place as well. That place is familiar to me. Because the soul is screaming from inside. You cannot be a slave. You cannot be guided by other people. You cannot be forced and, and abused by systems and governments. You're a free soul. But you're doing and it right now a little bit too, by saying that you didn't smoke weed coming here and saying that I'm you don't smoke weed no. is under the... I'm no, I but can... But a little bit it comes I'm, through. First of all, I can... <laughs> which is a more ancient tradition than most of these rituals. That we first, do of it, all, the first of all, I'm not doing anything because of a tradition. I'm doing everything that I do and also my connection to Judaism and to religion is only because that as a secular person 
that the Creator opened his eyes and helped him to realize that the Creator is exist because I experienced a childhood with no religion, no tradition at all. And when he started calling me from inside, then I start realizing, hey, there's something to creation. And if you're going to give me the time, I will answer all of those things that you said, hopefully, I hope. And if not, so ask again. And I worked on finding my inner truth and it took me to religion. It took me to my Judaism. It brought me back to the roots and to certain tradition. But I'm not doing it because I'm commanded and I'm not doing it because that I have a certain tradition that I must keep. I don't owe nothing to no one and I couldn't care less about what other people are going to think about me and if I'm fulfilling my obligation by their opinions or not. I threw it all a long, long time ago. I rebelled a long, long time ago. Now, about drugs. I'm going to tell you my opinion and it's my opinion. And I'm not obligated no one to follow my truth. Always in my classes I'm teaching that people don't need to follow me. Just people need, and that's what I hope that they will achieve from me, that they will enjoy from me, that like that I found my inner point and I'm following it, that they will wake up to find their own inner point and going to follow their hearts. I don't want, I don't need followers. I just really care that people will enjoy life and will be happy and won't follow their fears. Now, about drugs. For me, as a person, I was a very close and sensitive kid. I was very spiritual in my mind. I felt spirituality. I was very sensitive. But I didn't have a clue how to express it and what to do with my emotions and my feelings. And one of the biggest gifts that I received from the Creator came in the shape of a very bad friend when I was 15 years old that taught me how to smoke weed. And it was one of the biggest gifts I ever received from someone in my lifetime. It opened my mind and it brought me to the light. It opened my mouth and my heart and I was able to share my thoughts and to speak and to have a conversation and also to listen to other people that felt open like that I felt and it saved and redeemed my life from complete darkness, from complete exile of my childhood. For me, it was a lifeline when I was 15 till I was 18. And then I start feeling that with that amazing spiritual development that I experienced through drugs, I felt that it was destroying certain parts of me and I'm not talking about no one else. I'm holding grass, weed, marijuana as medicine, as drug that is a real medicine. And you need to know how to use it and when to use it. And if your senses are strong and pure and powerful, so you can know it about yourself. You can have a self-awareness to know if it's building you or destroying you. If you're using it for a good cause or if your evil inclination is using you to kick you down to sadness and, and to many lackings that it can bring side effects of using certain medicine in the wrong place, in the wrong time. So then I stopped for a long time and I felt that I was healing from using that drug. So for me it was a contradiction, but with time and with age and with using it several more times in my life after being 18 as well, it brought me to many deep understandings and a lot of clarity. But like that it's written on the children of Aharon that they went in to the um, to the to, to the oil to Echal Kodesh to the holy ark when they were drunk from wine and the creator didn't like that even though that Rashi is interpreting and explaining that he, their intention was all to heaven they aimed to keep his will they yeah. were they were, they did. for sure, but the Creator took them, 
there was some lacking after the fact, when we're looking, we can all have our opinions, but the Torah is putting it with a certain mark that there is a certain default in that act, at least that's what I... But you cannot walk into that room without the incense either. I, I, no one. I don't know. I don't know. It's I, one thing that the priest has to bring before they can step in and not die. Is that if there's not sense? a clap? Yeah. No, that's not the, what the, they were doing. It's written that they were drunk from wine. Not them. I say any any okay. coin that so walked in again, the Beit so again, I don't to bring in again, the incense. Again, they couldn't walk in otherwise. I understand what you're saying, but it's important. It's, it's very but important. I, I, mainly, the thing was about the joke before. That's a reference. So I'm we just saying. So I'm, I'm just With saying. So I'm just that. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying, that that's my opinion and that's my thought, that even if a certain tool is needed for a certain person during his lifetime to use to uplift his life, like even eating, it does, and it's basic, everyone needs to eat, but Moshe Rabbeinu, in a certain point of his life, was alive for 120 days and nights without eating that and drinking high, yeah. at all. So now the thing is, now the thing is that, like I said before, even learning Torah, when you're receiving it from an external source, it will always gonna stay external. And I think, and that's my understanding, that even if a person now, in a certain stage of his life, is using a certain drug in a good way that is building him, that is supplying something good for him in his life, still, that's my thought, I think that it is only waking him up to understand that he can reach those levels without consuming something that is external. It's only waking you up to understand how deep you are. Now you need to use that as an elevator, as a vehicle to lift you, to take you to somewhere that you don't know how to reach that level on your own. But when that person will grow, will develop, he will be able to meditate and to think and to focus and to reach even higher levels than levels that he, enjoy, that he achieved by enjoying physical things. Because even weed is still a plant. Is still something physical, even though that it's attached attached to many spiritual roots, but still it is physical. It's the angel on the plant that we're talking about. I understand. Let's talk about mushrooms, for example. I understand. <laughs> no, no, no. Let's not talk about <laughs> mushrooms. <laughs> the point is, the point Let's is please not talk about mushrooms. But the point is the inner vision. As I was said, I'm not going to make a long statement about it, but it's your inner vision. If you have things that allow you to tap into your inner vision, which is the most critical thing that we're talking about here, that people lack, then that's mandatory. That's, it, going again, that's the most dogmatic. That's where the biggest taboo in our tradition is, because we're a full magical tradition, and we took other things. We have revolutionaries like you doing the same. It's like, wow, come on, go full blown if you're going to go out. That's my two cents, I will torture you. When a person is focusing in his spiritual being, he can access the highest places that are above this world. And then he can bring down bounty to this world, bounty that was not revealed yet. And every one of us got a certain power that his friend doesn't have. You can bring down to this world certain wonders that other people around you cannot bring down. And the world will enjoy the fruits of your honest effort of finding and searching the truth if you're going to walk in that path, if you're going to bring, going to deliver that message that you're carrying within your treasures that are treasured inside of you and only inside of you, your friends will be able to enjoy that. And that's the complete redemption. The complete redemption that we were hoping for is that every one of us will be truthful to his soul, to his heart, and will be able to express his feelings and his emotions. Because your friends, they really need you. They don't need me. That's why they're your friends and not mine. 
They're surrounding you. They're meeting you every day in work, in college, in yeshiva, in the street, in the grocery store, because they are attached and connected to you in spiritual bondings that cannot be separated. And when I am being honest, I'm affecting my circles. And why, well, when my circles are enjoying my honesty, they're being a little bit more honest about themselves as well. And then their circles are enjoying their honesty. And that's how we're reaching out to the wide world, to every individual, to every person, because one person cannot touch them all. Just every one of us got his beloved ones and got his family and got his friends and circles and got his community and got his hopes and dreams and journeys in life. And we must see them plant that light. Which light? The light of our soul to express our true selves. And if we spoke before about certain levels in life, like using drugs in certain time in your life or whatever, even a method, if you believe that you always need to smoke. You have people that always feel like smoke. It's, I, I don't mind. If you checked yourself and you felt that this is your lifestyle and that's the right thing for you, I don't mind as long as you're not destroying for other people. If you believe that that's your truth, go for it. I don't mind. I don't care. I want you to be happy. If that's how you found happiness, I'm happy. As long as you're not making your partner sad or whatever, your children. But if really you're happy and it's building you, succeed, grow, whatever. I don't mind. It's California, no? But, <laughs> but I want to say there is something beautiful in it. Why? Because the Creator... He will bring certain people to meet you in life. And those people are the people that need to hear the message that you're carrying. And not my message. Because He will bring the people that need to hear my message to my place. And they're going to hear my message. And the Creator is supervising from above that every individual will receive exactly what that he's needed. Exactly. Light, and, light reflects. Exa and it's all harmony. Yes. And it's amazing. It's, it's waves that are, 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 are getting one into the other, into each other, and, and in great harmony and with an amazing peace. And everyone must count on themselves. People are afraid to be who that they are because they felt in the past that they been ashamed or insulted or hurt on expressing their emotions and being who that they were so they decided to close it because that their self esteem was hurt and now they're not holding themselves as holy people and now they think about themselves that they are bad and they're mean and that they are weak and whatever and they're not allowing themselves to be who that they really are because that fake reality of this world destroyed their real self-esteem, their real awareness to their real nature, to who that they really are, that they are just good and innocent and holy souls, holy people. So now, to believe in yourself and to express yourself, it's something that needs to be done with no fear. To express yourself for that, you need to be a very brave person. To be able to share your thoughts and your emotions and to talk about it and to express yourself, to sing it, to, 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 to paint it, to write it down, to share, to tell people. This is something that for that you need to be a very strong, a very heroic person. Really to share your heart, to open yourself, even though that you've been hurt so many times, insulted, criticized so many times, destroyed so many times. But that is the real mission that every one of us will be truthful to himself and will go with the torch that he received from heaven and going to be proud to present himself to the, to the world, to people. And just, you don't need to, to that no one going to like you or going to accept you or going to accept you into his life. You're really going to feel so much like better and good about yourself if you will just going to say the truth. And the best, like the, the highest truth of them all can be said even in the most filthiest places. Like to say, I lied, it's the worst truth of them all. But it's so divine, it's so amazing to be able to say, I'm sorry I lied to you. 
I'm sorry, it was a lie. I was wrong, I made a mistake, I'm sorry. To be able to apologize, it's such a divine truth, even though that it takes you to the lowest places. But while it takes you to those low places, it's illuminate the darkness. It washes all the filth and it brings light and clarity into your life, into those lowest places that you were afraid to deal with. So, to be afraid from admitting that you went to such low places is wrong, because by going to those places and just being honest and sincere about who that you are and what that really happened to you in your life, we're just going to wash those wounds and going to heal those scars and going to bring you to a happier place, to a place of completion, of unity, of understanding, of inner peace, of amazing things that, that, that will bring you to spiritual levels after building yourself emotionally. And, and I bless you all to enjoy life and to be who that you've been sent to be. Amen. The Creator who knew who you are from before you were born to this world and He sent you to this world with qualities and with talents and with abilities. And I bless you to use them wisely and to enjoy them. And that Hashem bless us all. Amen. 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 We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.